Hi guys, I'm Danny, and I started the Sunday Gym because I've noticed lately that people tend to go to colleges and universities without actually knowing why they're there. Afterwards, starting jobs are unfulfilling, so I'm interviewing different professionals to see what they have to say and to share their experience and knowledge with you. I hope you enjoy it. Right. Start right on. Alex, thank you for being here. How are you doing today? Thank you so much for the invitation. I'm doing good. How are you? Glad to hear. I'm doing pretty fine. It was a pretty good day. The podcast is going to be focused on three main questions. What do you do for a living? How did you get there? How did you know that this was the way to go? So tell us what you do for a living, Alex. Yes, uh, I'm currently doing a PhD research in welfare law. And I'm working at the Center for uh, of Law and Welfare at the University. Could you speak a little bit louder for me? Sure. I'm working at the Center of Law and Welfare at the University of Eastern Finland. Yeah. Um, my research is on the legal rights of older immigrants and immigrants with dementia in Finland. Uh, these two groups have never been researched before in the country. So this is the interesting aspect uh, about it. You true. Uh, it sounds like one. Yeah, it can be a bit challenging though, but uh, yeah. In all fairness, if it wasn't challenging, it that then you really shouldn't have been doing it because it's uh, and this is my personal opinion, of course, but it happened to be shared by a lot of people at, at the young age, and by young I mean below fifty. <laughs> and I well, yeah, I mean, come on, I, with today's world, fifty is the new forty, so yeah. At a young age, if you stay in the comfort zone, well, let's just say you're not doing yourself any favors, and 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 not only yours but those around you as well. So, I applaud you for this decision to take on something that hadn't been taken before. And uh, how did you get there? Were you walking on the street one day and you were like, "Let me do a PhD on jobs"? <laughs> well. You want me to start from back home or just right before I moved to Finland? Up to you, totally up to you. Yes, well, if I go back, let's say home, uh, where I was born in Syria. First, um, I only got this interest in being abroad and experiencing new culture and new things. I would say at the second or third year of my bachelor's. Uh, before that time, I never had for some reason, any interest in <laughs> dealing with any new culture or these things. But then uh, I was doing English literature there in Syria. It's uh, that aspect of literature, maybe, and world literature and reading about this stuff, like triggered something in me as, OK, when I finish this, I'll gain some work experience and then I'll absolutely go abroad and have a new education, new work experience, new contact, new culture. Well, that plan failed a bit, actually, <laughs> because, uh, you know, the war broke out in Syria. So I could continue my education, fortunately, and uh, I got some work experience, but not as I planned. But I moved to Denmark uh, and I decided, OK, English literature is not going to feed me <laughs> in this. <country. Yeah. laughs> Everyone speaks English and nah, OK, I thought, OK, I'll do international relations. And why I thought about that, it's maybe, well, the international relations give you the opportunity actually to meet a lot of international people and where we can also research a lot of different societal problems and issues. So I thought that's that's the right program for me now uh, as moving to a new place, a new culture. Not to mention the Danish folks are pretty open-minded on different people in different cultures. And I know that for a fact, because actually I lived there for, for some time. Mm -hmm. I graduated my master's degrees over there in the Obok University, so I can 100% confirm it. Although, in all fairness, that was 11 years ago. So, But I highly doubt that, that things have changed in that department. Yeah, yeah, actually, I, that's where I studied my <laughs> Bachelor and Masters at Olberg University. Yeah. Yeah, I lived there for uh, six years. And then that's uh, actually the the thing that made me continue on Masters, actually, in the same field, but more focused on development and international relations. There I uh, started focusing on the rights of vulnerable people, refugees, stateless people, victims of female genital mutilation, 
So here my interest in human rights and this area got more intensified, I would say. Uh, so when I graduated, my job search just always included this keyword like vul vulnerable. And actually it succeeded. I landed a job at uh, Aarhus municipality. Uh, where I moved to Aarhus actually before I moved here to Finland. Um, I worked with the socially and mentally vulnerable people, helping them with their access to Danish welfare system and their needs and if they need support. There actually, that's where I decided, OK, well, it sounds stable and OK, you can just settle there and that's it. But I thought, OK, I'm 30. It's not going to end there simply. <laughs> I have to do something I, I felt OK. This was a successful adventure the first time and I'm still at, I feel like I have still the energy to move again, do something new. And I thought, yeah, I shouldn't end just put a period there and that's it. So I thought, OK, I'm interested in this field. Uh, why not get more, let's say, theoretical experience uh, with research? and more specified to a new group. And that's where I came across this opportunity in Finland, research on a new vulnerable group, to me, I mean, new vulnerable group, and it's the uh, people with dementia. And I thought, well, I need to do this. I need to add more challenge to my life. <laughs> yeah, that's why I, I said that in the beginning, because and this is a pretty good combination and this is why i actually wanted you on this channel because you're a pretty good example now i 100 percent agree that uh when you see you have more energy you have the energy to do something you gotta gotta do it because otherwise you'd look back and you'd be sorry about not taking this opportunity even if it's the wrong thing and i i took some wrong challenges i well, they weren't wrong because i learned from them but Obviously, it wasn't for me. Obviously, it didn't work. But what I'm trying to say is that when you see that you have the energy, especially in young person in, in his 20s, 30s and 40s, you got to do it because it's it's within you. And it's the snowball effect, right? When you start doing it, then you add on it and add on it and add on it. And it's pretty good. And this is something that stays with you forever. So it's 100% remarkable, which leads me to the third question. How did you knew, and obviously you knew that this was the way to go? And I'm asking this all the time because I'm sure you've noticed this. Uh, you're a well-traveled man. You've seen action. Uh, you've noticed how people tend to go to colleges, universities, because of this stigma that you have to have a diploma to make it in life. And then they start jobs that definitely are not for them. And because I received a few messages on LinkedIn and here and there, uh, for the record, no, I am not against universities. I am not against the diplomas in the colleges. I have one, so obviously it worked for me. Obviously, it doesn't work for everybody. It's, and it's because I'm talking to people from all over the world, from the whole globe. This is something that's been an issue and people don't talk about the issue. So that's why I actually created the channel. And obviously, you knew that this was the way to go. So how did you knew it? Was it a gut feeling? If you've been influenced by somebody, was it uh, what happened? So, well, uh, at first, yeah, my uh, let's say my plans were like one time new culture, new experience and maybe go back home uh, or stay where I am, settle in the new culture if I adapted and could integrate as I expected or a new adventure. And then what happened? A new adventure. Because actually, the first one going back home is not really possible now. Yeah. <laughs> situation. Uh, the second one, that's where I started to know it actually that ah, uh, this is going to be, I will be in a comfort zone seriously. I don't want that uh, yet. <laughs> that's where I know, okay, um, this is the way to go. Again, a new experience, a new exposure because. The second one, the, the first experience was very enriching, like it developed my personality, my like it made me a completely different person, like uh, it, it changed a lot of things in me. Uh, and I thought. A new exposure will absolutely even 
hopefully improve even <laughs> things. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where uh, I knew it. This is going to happen. And it's, it's, uh, some of you might think, okay, people have ambitions to keep climbing the ladder of diplomas and these, but actually it's not really about the PhD itself or the higher degree. It's more about the this new research area, the new experience, the new culture. I mean, I, I can't couldn't see... agree more, but that's why I asked what threw you in that direction? Yeah, obviously going back home wasn't an option, but then again, you were in Denmark, you could have picked any number of things to do. What threw you in that direction exactly? Exactly. Uh, the thing is, yeah, you could wonder why why not do this research in Denmark, for example. Well, that's the thing also. Um, I thought about it, but I thought it won't be really challenging to do it in Denmark because I already adapted to life there and all is settled. And I'm, I was literally really in a comfort zone. So I yeah. thought, it will be possible, yeah, I will gain this research experience and new experience, but I will do it maybe easily, like it won't be challenging, it won't be, yeah, there won't be this new cultural aspect, even though you might think, okay, it's another Nordic country, maybe it's not really the new cultural aspect, but even though I moved here like three months ago, what I'm telling you, there are <laughs> really different things, so um, yeah, it's... Oh yeah, of course there are. Uh, in my fair, in all fairness, it's wrong to think that all Scandinavian countries are like, they, yeah, they are similar, but there's definitely, uh, you know, I'm from Bulgaria. It's it's basically like comparing different Slavic countries. Yeah, yeah we kind of all look alike, but definitely <laughs> there's more than one difference over here. Exactly. Yeah, I've been to also Croatia, Bosnia, and Serbia. Yeah, there yeah. you go. <laughs> yeah. I. Couldn't agree more, and I'm really happy that you found a way to, and, and you found time to be on the podcast. If you were able to give the new generation that that's right now in the universe, because that's basically, I mean, everybody's my target group, but I'm mostly focused on the young folks that haven't figured it out yet. Yeah. Is there a one one advice you'd like to give them? If you have a feeling that you want to do something, just go for it because you will regret not doing it then because you will not regret you might think okay i'm doing well here why do i need to do something new and go uh, take risks but you will maybe you will keep thinking that i should have tried that because you might yep. try and fail okay if you fail maybe always draw uh Way and back. not to mention, when you're a young person, the mistakes that you make aren't vital because not a lot of people depend on your mistakes. And if you don't do it when you're young, you're going to do it when you're older, when there are actually people around you who, who depend on you. So yeah. you got to do the mistakes on an early stage. I definitely agree with you. I couldn't have said it better. Perfect. Thank you. With that said, Alex, huge thanks for being here, man. I totally appreciate it. Thank you so much for the invitation. Right on. Bye. Have a nice evening. Okay. Guys, I hope this one was useful. Please follow the channel on YouTube, Rumble, Gap, Twitter, Facebook and LinkedIn. Ring the bell and all the good stuff. Have a nice week ahead and I'll see you next Sunday.